In this video, we are going to look at the ratio of drift speed of electrons in two sections of wires. One is narrow and then the other one is thicker. Okay, so you can see here we have two copper wires joined together and carry a current as shown. So when you have current flowing inside a wire that is not uniform, when I say not uniform, I mean the area is not the same, it's still the same current though. Because imagine, right? Okay, let's look at the current. Your current is going like that, which means by convention, electron will go in the opposite direction. So let's let's pretend there are four electrons or four marbles. Okay, so you got a bunch of electrons. Okay, four of them. Hey, they are just flowing, having good time. Okay, and they all have their own drip speed. You cannot tell me that by the time you reach here, you only have two electrons left, huh? Here got four, then reach here only got two. Nani? See the Bermuda Triangle? The Bermuda Wire? Cannot be right. So the number of electrons that will flow in the same amount of time has to be the same because... Okay, the only thing I can tell you is that there's probably faster electron flow in wire P because this is narrower. So imagine it's like a hallway. Okay, let's say you, you have a hallway and then you want the same amount of students or same amount of people to walk through the hallway in one minute. So if the hallway is very wide, then you can take your time because you're not blocking anyone. But if the hallway is kind of narrow, then you need to walk faster, okay? So that more people can pass through, you know? All right. So let's see if my guess is true. I think that the narrower wire, narrow wire, faster electron. Let's see. Okay, so it says here that wire P and wire Q has a diameter D and 2D. All right. So I think I need to establish an equation first because you're asked to find the ratio of drift speed. So first things first, I'll write the drift speed equation. So step one, I is equal to NAVE. Write equation. Step two, determine the constants. Who is constant? Well, the first thing that is always constant is E. Because E is electronic charge, right? Okay. Current is also constant because uh, it's the same wire. Same. There's only one pathway for the electron to flow. There's only one hallway for the students to walk. If the student walking through the hallway, let's say you got like 10 students enter the hallway and only 4 students come out, GG. If you got 10 students entering the hallway and got 12 students come up, GG. Okay, because there's no alternate path, no branching, nothing. So the current is constant. So let's not think about weird stuff. It's near to Halloween now. All right, so the number density is the same. N. Teacher, how you know N is the same? Nah, copper wire, ma. So same material, same number density. Okay, and then for this one, uh, P and Q in series, or one after the other, I is constant. So you have determined all your constant. I is constant, uh, N is constant, and electric charge is constant. Wow, teacher, not much, not many people left. Uh. Oh, yes, yes, not many people left. So then, number three, if you need to, you can rearrange. If you don't need to, you can straight away write this. Um, I can just isolate out AV is equal to I over NE. And I over NE is constant. So I can write AV is equal to constant. And because of this, I can say A is inversely proportional to drift speed. Of course, some of you may be thinking, Miss, uh, how to how 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 to write the proportionality relationship? And you know, if it's proportional, right? I can actually say, for example, um, I want to find this drift speed of P to Q. So I'm looking for VP to VQ. So I can rearrange this equation or flip the ratio a bit where V is also inversely proportional to A. Okay. And from here, what I can write is VP over VQ is equal to AP over AQ. I can definitely write this. Okay. You know, AP over AQ. AQ over AP. And definitely write this, okay, by flipping it. So because of the one over relationship, 
what I can do here is I can invert the P and Q like this. Okay. But if you need an extra step, you can. Okay. So I'm going to write the extra step in purple. So to look at proportionality, step four, the ratio, what we have now is AV is equal to constant. So the first uh, part of the wire, I will write APVP is equal to constant. Let's say the constant is K. La. K. Okay. And AQVQ is also K. Okay, equate them, right? So APVP is equal to AQVQ. And finally, what do you get at long last? You will have VP over VQ is equal to AQ over AP. All right. So for me, because I'm very familiar with using ratios, so I will hopscotch. I will write the equation. I will think about the constant and then I will jump to here and then I will jump to the ratio. But I'm showing you the thought process, everything that's going on in my brain as I do this. Okay, you only need to do number four if, let's say, your previous mathematics training, you're not used to dealing with proportionality. Okay, or you don't know why Miss Lee say, oh, V is proportional to 1 over A, I can write like that. Okay, so this is the only video where I will actually break it down and explain. The next ones, I will start to jump. In the entire circuit chapter, we have many, many examples that is about ratios. So if you know how to deal with a proportionality relationship, even from your, for your young modulus or your elastic property chapter, then it's very standard one. Write equation, find constant. Third step, write proportionality relationship. I will always write this one because uh, in paper two, this, this sentence got marked. Proportionality relationship. Step three. And step four, ratio. Ratio is my best friend, it's your best friend. So you may be thinking, uh, do I need to show this? No need. So if you can straight away arrive at this ratio, that'll be great. If you need an extra step or two, that is also okay. All right, because you are learning. So now, 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 now we can solve the question. Okay, the we know that VP over VQ drift speed is AQ over AP. But also at the same time, if we think about area, right, A is equal to pi diameter square over 4. So pi over 4 is constant, you know. So A is proportional to diameter square. After a while, you will start to fly already. I trust you. I know you can. VP over VQ is equal to... So right now, I need the diameter of Q over the diameter of P square. Do I know what the diameter of Q is? Let's take a peek at the wire again. Q is twice 2D. P is D. Okay. So I'm going to put this one as 2D over D. Which is uh, D and D cancel, which is 4. So the answer here would be D. 4. Okay. The ratio of VP to VQ. Let's go back and look at the wire. At P, the electrons are traveling four times on average, drifting along four times faster than Q. So was our guess correct? Narrow wire, faster electron, because you, you need to have the same amount of electron passing through per unit time. So you need to have same amount of marbles passing through a point in a given time. So here is narrower. If I want the same amount of marbles to travel, I need the marbles to move, 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 move faster. Whereas here, yo bro, you chill lah, because you know, there's a lot of space. We can go two at a time. All right, so narrow wire, faster electron indeed. The electrons here, if they are at the speed of 4V, then the electrons here will travel at the speed of V. Okay, so that's it for this drift velocity question. Please understand that uh, proportionality relationship is pretty important. So this is an example of how to you do it. And go do some questions on your own. Bye.